Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, we're doing a massive electrical upgrade to this 2021 Grand Design Reflection 303 RLS. Now, originally when I started doing this project, I thought about recording the entire time and showing you guys a lot of how to and how to install all this stuff. But, you know, I was on kind of a time crunch with getting it done and recording just really slows you down. And so what I decided to do was just do the project, show you guys when it was all done, talk about everything and show you what we did to this rig. So the plan for this rig was 800 watts of solar with 600 amp hours of the SOK batteries. Um, Victron Multi Plus 2, the uh, 220 volt output unit, um, uh, MPVT charger for the solar, obviously, and an Orion DC to DC charger. So we did all that stuff to this rig uh, over the last two days. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm actually gonna start right here at the shore power because the very first thing I did was I disconnected our shore power from the back of the uh, electrical panel and pulled it out of here and pulled the entire cord out because where we were running it to, I didn't have enough space or enough enough length. So I needed to replace that cord. So that was step one, was replacing that, taking it out of the panel and out of this shore power connector, running a new cord from here to the front bay. And let's show you where that's at. So without getting too overwhelmed by all the wires and whatnot initially, let's just go one at a time. So shore power from the what i was just talking about the shore power inlet comes in goes right down and into our multi plus that is what feeds the uh two legs of 120 our neutral and our ground into the multi plus then coming out of the multi plus is now our our new power cord that feeds the main panel so that comes out goes right through our wall comes through our wall down this line here I have it locked up in there goes back into that hole which then connects into our uh, AC distribution panel now the other thing I did to that AC distribution panel was I disconnect because it also has the DC in it as well was I disconnected our cord for the uh, converter which was originally sitting right here so I disconnected it took the converter out because now that Victron Multi Plus is what is our new converter. That's really it for the AC side of things. It's just the shore power coming into the Multi Plus and then coming back out of the Multi Plus to the panel. That's it for uh, the 50 amp six gauge AC powering. Now let's go over the DC system. So here we have our three 200 amp hour SOK uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, these are all connected in parallel, meaning I have my negatives all connected and our positives all connected, okay? And what I did was, as you see, I have my positive coming out right here to our main T-fuse and our negative coming out on this other side to the battery shunt for uh, the BMV. Now, the reason I did that is because when, you know, you, if you have one battery, obviously it's just positive and negative. When you have two, some people will say, oh, you can just put your positive and negatives off and parallel over to the next, which you can. There's nothing wrong with that. But to get maximum uh, equal charging, I find that putting the positive on one end of the batteries and the negative off the other end really helps to equalize all of our power throughout. So let's show you the negative side of the system first. Again, comes through our battery monitor shunt. Uh, like always, there's nothing else in between it and the battery monitor except for that because that's how it monitors everything else. So we have the BMV 712 uh, shunt goes into our distribution bar. Off the distribution bar, we have a few things, okay? Uh, number one is, of course, our uh, big negative cable that runs to the multi-plus. We have this negative cable right here is what feeds the entire DC system of the RV, the, or the original DC system. Uh, this little cord is just for the TPMS 
repeater that's right up there. Um, then we have our negative side for the MPPT charger, and we have our negative side for our Orion smart uh, DC to DC charger. That's it for the negative. Off our positive, again, it goes through the T-class fuse, up in and feeds our distribution bar, our you know bus bar, whatever you want to call it. Off the bus bar, same exact stuff over here. We have our positive for the multi-plus, four out cable. We have our positive for the MPPT, which goes through a circuit breaker and then into the MPPT. And then we have the positive for the TPMS. We have the positive for the uh, Orion battery monitor and the positive for the positive side of the RV's regular uh, electrical system. So then up here is the MPPT charger, which is for the uh, solar. Um, now this rig already came equipped with 10 gauge wire, which is rated up to 30 amps. So we have 10 gauge coming in, um, which first our positive does come through a little 30 amp uh, circuit breaker down into the charger, negative, boom, and then you saw where that connects. Then over here, we have the non-isolated version of the Orion Smart. So we just have a positive negative off, and then coming from the truck is just the positive. Uh, it goes up to a nice big old fuse up here, and then we have it dropped out into here and onto an Anderson connector. Now that goes onto the truck, and that's pretty much all she wrote. Up here on the roof, we have four 200 watt panels uh, totaling 800 watts total. I have these wired in a series parallel combination. So you have two that are in series and then two that are in series. And then, you know, two sets are now in parallel. And what that does is it increases the voltage high enough so that you can start charging earlier, number one, uh, which is a, a great thing because a solar charger doesn't come on until it's five volts above the battery voltage. So having these connected in series, um, increases it from 20 volts to 40 volts um, and then so again it, it reaches that nominal voltage much much earlier in the day and then you know in parallel just because you know instead of running all four in series the reason we did the, the combo with parallel is because if these two panels are getting shaded back here and these two are not if you had these all in series it would affect all four panels but having them in parallel you know, if there's a little bit of shading on that back one back there due to like that air conditioner or a tree or something like that, that those two panels will be slightly affected from the, the shading, but this other one that isn't shaded won't have any effect on it. So that's why we do the combo um, in this kind of scenario. This rig already did come uh, equipped with a little um, port right there with a 10 gauge wire. Uh, it was already ready for solar. So that made, made life a lot easier. But uh, if, if that wasn't there, just like it did on the big country, we'd be drilling a hole and running it down the chase down into the basement and everything like that. But again, fortunately the wiring was already there. So it just made the job easier. So that's the system. That's really it. Um, the last thing I will show you actually is, you know, off the MPPT, we have this little black cable here that feeds into the servo. So let's go over there and show you that. Without me climbing in here too much, you can see our Servo GX right back here, which has the solar. It has the uh, BMV plugged into it, and then it has the MultiPlus plug plugged into it. So let's go inside and show you the monitor. Now inside, I went ahead and I wanted this to look as clean as possible. So I got it mounted up into here, which is the original, uh, you know, where the, where the standard panel is. Um, so I have our BMV battery monitor up here and I have the GX50 display screen for the servo um, which shows everything about the system um, you know we, we can do a whole other video on what this is this is just a showing you of what we did to this rig to make it off-grid um, this system as it sits can run this entire rig all the time 24-7 365 but of course it's limited by its battery power okay so what i mean by that is that this uh multi plus is the two time 120 version uh the multi plus two which puts out two legs of 120 to that distribution panel meaning that everything in the rv is running off this inverter it has 50 amp pass through and then it of course can make its 3000 watts and do its thing as an inverter now 
it's limited of course by our batteries and how much space we have in the batteries 600 amp hours is a pretty darn good battery bank um, this is gonna last them a long time so we did a little test this morning with the AC and it looks like if just the AC is running off these batteries you're looking at almost five hours worth of uh, air conditioning probably you know four four and a half um, which is great uh, that's a pretty long time uh, to me what that means is you know these people can go ahead and in the evening if the batteries are at 100 percent everything else is running you know they have their tvs they do their thing whatever they go to bed with 100 percent battery charge the bedroom ac can run overnight most likely and get them through to the morning um, because it's not like the ac runs for eight nine hours okay in the evening if you're in 80 degree weather and it's overnight is 80 you're probably going to run that thing for maybe three or four hours it's going to run for 10 minutes then off for 15 minutes then on for 15 minutes then off for 20 minutes then on for 10 minutes and back and forth back and forth all night long that's you know what happens um but it gives them the opportunity now to make it through the night in the morning they have 40 percent 50 percent battery life or even there if they're down to 20 percent battery life they can still make their coffee do their thing get ready the solar is going to start to produce some power by them in the morning um, which is one thing but you know they need to run the ac because they're in in a hotter environment they can go ahead and crank up their generator or if they're actually somewhere where they can plug into power they can do that too but you, know, you can run the generator but you don't have to do it immediately right uh if you don't have this type of system and you get up in the morning and you're boondocking and the first thing you want to do is make coffee you need to go run your generator <laughs> or if you don't have the battery power and you, you know you need to do something to get battery power back up so your inverter can power up uh, and do what you need to do in the morning so it's really really nice to have this kind of system because minus the air conditioner you know that's the biggest draw of course obviously um, tvs phones dehumidifiers cpap machines all that kind of stuff can run all the time off this system and probably never really need a generator you know of course if you have a few days with no sun of course you're going to need something to, to make up for that but the point is this is a great off-grid system uh for for starting out uh no it's not going to run the ac all the time that is so impractical um you know to run the ac all the time you need to be producing you know thousands of watts because you're air conditioner pulls 14 1500 watts by itself so that means you need to be making 14 1500 watts all the time which you know first thing in the morning if it's not making 1400 watts, it, it's just not practical for most people um, i actually have a, a pretty big plan for the new rig but we'll talk about that when it comes time too um, but for this this is a great system if you guys have any questions on this system how i wired everything up how it works anything like that make sure to drop a comment below if you have a system like this let us know about it. Um, I appreciate you guys watching Why Not RV. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Click the notification bell so you get notified of my future videos. Uh, make sure to drop a like. We'll see you next time. Bye.